Hello and welcome back to another Coffee Break Archaeology. Here's a little bit of intro music. Do 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 do. I hope you enjoy watching this episode. So, hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee Break Archaeology C14 Dating Simulator Let's Play 1.5. So, why 1.5? Well, this is actually now my third attempt to record a Let's Play video about uh, the C14 dating simulator game. In my first attempt, I only actually recorded my face. My second attempt, I was quite unwell and failed to provide some very important information about uh, why I was uh, looking at the game and uh, more about my overall aim with looking at archaeology games and why a archaeology blog or, or channel will be looking at such games. So to start off we will address this now in this video before we uh, get stuck back into the game. So why am I looking at games as an archaeology channel? Those of you who uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or on my website will know that uh, recently I released a blog post looking at this idea of archaeo gaming which you should be now be able to see on the screen. So what is Archeo Gaming? I don't want to go into too much detail here. As I said, I have written a blog post about it and it is going to be a series of, uh, series of blogs. But Archeo Gaming, very briefly defined, is the archaeology in and of video games. In a broader sense, in a much broader sense, it is also the examination of gaming development and gaming culture. It both examines video games both as uh, archaeological artefacts, but also as landscapes, sort of virtual synthetic landscapes. But I said, if you want to know more, please do head over to my uh, to my blog and check out the. Uh, check out the uh, poster which is still not loaded on on the screen here we go so you can find that uh, that blog at www.coffeebreakarchaeology.blog so as well as um, C14 I'll also be looking at, at, at some other games as well not just uh, looking at C14 but I've also got two other games in mind as well uh, one is called Archaeology X which is a sort of dating uh, dating archaeology excavation simulator and Barrow Hill Curse of Stone Circle which is much more sort of a mystery slash horror, jump scare horror game with archaeological themes I haven't got an exact timetable this for this yet, but C14 is actually quite a short game, maybe three to four hours worth of gameplay. Um, so I will I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to complete the let's play of C14 and then move on to the other, or whether I'm going to alternate let's plays um, with looking at C14, then maybe Barrow Hill, then maybe Archaeology X, and then come back to C14. I don't know exactly yet. But as well as these Let's Play series, I will also uh, do a blog as a sort of review of the game and also looking at it in its context of Archeo Gaming. So anyway, back to C14. C14 is an archaeology, archaeology dating simulator, uh, which can be found on Steam uh, for a price of $14.99. I got it slightly cheaper when it was on sale um, so this is uh, what the steam page says about c14 c14 is c14 dating is an otomi dating sim that combines archaeology friendship and love you'll play as melissa flores a third year anthropology student participating in a summer archaeological internship the field school takes place in Belgium, over 5,000 miles away from your native California. Okay, it's a little bit out of your comfort zone, and the fact that you'll be staying in an unfamiliar country for two months can be nerve-wracking, but you couldn't pass up such a learning opportunity. You get to excavate at an authentic prehistoric site which has uncovered Neanderthal remains in the past. 
Maybe you'll dig up some bones or even unearth tools that were manufactured by early humans. And of course, you might forge friendships and find romance during your stay. Key game features include play as Melissa, anthropology student abroad on a summer internship, romance Deandre, Hendrik, Kyle or Shoji, dating sim gameplay with optional archaeology minigames, beautiful manga artwork and original soundtrack, a different cast with some very unique characters. Can you have very unique characters? Either you're unique or you're not. Uh, let's not get into semantics. So that is a brief overview of the game. Um, it was released back only two years, ago, uh, three years ago now, almost back in 27th of April 2016, published and developed by Winter Wolves. Don't know much really about Winter Wolves as a developer. Um, so it has mainly positive reviews on um, on Steam. I will admit I have sort of completed the game very briefly just to get an idea of what we're letting ourselves in for but I think there's a certain amount of uh, repeatability because obviously you've got the different romance options. Now why was I attracted to C14? I think that, that's a very good question. Um, I found it I think very unusual to combine the ideas of a dating simulator with archaeology. Obviously from my point of view it's a really great idea I, I absolutely love it and also what really attracted to me was obviously the play on the name c14 radio carbon dating dating simulator the game is full of really really bad puns when you get to meet some of the characters you will understand it so i'll just give a brief overview from my point of view of the game the game is it's less of a game and really less of a demo and, and less of a sort of dating simulator in a way and more of just an interactive story. There's very little customization of your character. You are playing as Melissa. You don't really get to decide your appearance. You don't really get to make many decisions uh, about what happens. Um, I won't spoil that too much. We'll touch on that when we get into playing the game. Um, but it is an interesting story and it's an interesting experience of someone who is in a very unfamiliar setting being away for the first time really such so far away and really their first experience of archaeology i was very fortunate that when i was training uh, to be an archaeologist both my university and the field school which i studied were all very close to my home i was uh, went to reading university and i uh, studied um, at the field school at Silchester which was only about maybe 12 miles from where I was living but I still camped and I was still part of that field school experience but I very know I, ve I very much know what it's like uh, going out for the first time on a dig um, and being and not really knowing anyone and that sort of excitement and nervousness about your first excavation so actually from that point of view I think it does highlight a really good experience about what it is like to be uh, an archaeologist uh, doing your first excavation and hopefully that will come across in the game. So without further ado we'll uh, start up the game. Now as I mentioned um, you get very little choice there's no actual um, voice acting either. It's all done by sort of written text, so you're going to have to put up with me doing a lot of court, lot of recording, uh, recording, talking. And uh, because of that, I've got a nice mug full of coffee and a nice full cafe tier to um, keep me nice and hydrated. So I know I've actually already started this game, but I thought since we're really sort of looking at this from a from the proper angle now, we'll actually restart. Um, fresh start. Would you like to turn off the mini games? No, no I don't. That's the big thing that really drew me as well. It has, as well, it says it has archaeology themed mini games and we'll see those. There's really two if I'm honest and uh, we'll see how those develop throughout the course of, of the game. So mini games are turned on. You can use and also this is basically as much customization as we get. We can decide to do the mini games or not or we can uh, change dialogue and font but I think we'll uh, I think we'll keep to that so Melissa ah is this it I'm not gonna attempt to do voices 
or accent. I'm absolutely terrible at that, so please do forgive me if it does sound a little bit monotone. I will try and make it obvious where the characters are talking, although it does come up on the screen. I glanced at the map, which highlighted the road names along with a star next to my destination. After comparing, I came to the conclusion this wasn't the place, but I was close. The village of Koyens was clustered by the Muse River, and I paused to admire the pretty gardens surrounding the houses. I, it, I was oddly calm, despite being over 5,000 miles from my Californian home. The reality of being in another country had yet to sink in. Up ahead there was a clearing, separated from the road by a fence. On the other side, a few tents were stationed behind a two-storey building. I spotted an open chain gate with a billboard in front of the driveway. It read, Gote de Calian and Tree. That's the place! A familiar figure stood by the entrance. She was currently talking to a middle-aged man, but when she saw me, she gave me a cheerful wave as I ran up to her. Cherie! With one hand on my bag, handle I exchanged a half embrace with my professor. Now she does very much look like quite a lot of professors I know. Very eclectic dress sense. I didn't know you had already arrived. If you called me I would have come and picked you up from a train station. You mentioned the cave wasn't far so I wanted to soak in the scenery and enjoy the sights. I'm glad you made it safely. Was it difficult taking the train? Nope. Well, I did try to practice my French at the ticket station until the person said that he could speak English. He pointed me in the right direction. At least you'll be able to brush up on your French. You'll find it not too different from Spanish. Uh, not so sure about that. You'll catch on quickly. I groaned inwardly. My Spanish wasn't the most fluent, but I mentioned it in my interview when discussing how I had coped with staying in Belgium without knowing French. I glanced around and then turned to Sherry. Where's Paige? Didn't she say she'd be arriving earlier today? Or was that tomorrow? <clears throat> I got an email from her yesterday saying that there was a family emergency. She won't be able to participate this summer. I failed to hide my disappointment. I will try to do some facial expressions though, just if not for your amusement. I failed to hide my disappointment. Paige was... The other student from my university planned to attend field school. We even worked out trips to do every weekend during our stay. I mustered up a weak smile. Mm. It's understandable. Can't be helped if it's family. Then it would just be me. Sherry gestured to the other person present to change the subject. Before I forget, let me introduce you to Professor o Augustine Dupont, Chief Archaeologist of Kaelin Cave. I eagerly extended my arm for a handshake. Everything I heard about Mr Dupont was from Sherry and she mentioned that he was a revered Belgian archaeologist. It's an honour to meet you. I'm Melissa Flores, a junior. I look forward to seeing Sherry's students every summer. It's a pleasure to meet you. That's about how I naturally smile, actually. Mr Dupont spoke with a very heavy... French Oxford, but I had no trouble comprehending him. Have you gone over everything with Sherry? When the students from the age arrive tonight, they will get their first lecture before dinner. So I said I wasn't going to do accents. Yes, I'll attend the lecture though. If I was going to be submerged in the language, I might as well start by hanging out with a couple of the local students. Mr. Dupont eyed my suitcase. It must have been a tiring trip. Come, we shall show you around the back. We shall show you around the back. Students will be spending the weekdays here. We reached the clearing and I spotted the same tents, most clustered around the perimeter against the bushes, and a few were closer to the building. Now, those do remind me quite a lot of. Um, tents from my experiences at Silchester but 
When I went to Silchester, since I was being I was going to be there for about six weeks, I decided that I really needed a tent I could actually stand up in. Luckily, uh, my dad was an old scout leader and we still had an old scout patrol tent lying around, uh, which meant I could easily stand up in my tent uh, and have a lot more space to move about. And I was very grateful of that, as were some people on the dig to come and at least have a sit down and relax, especially when it got very wet. Those tents... You know, I, 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 I would really not want a tent that small if I was going to be s spending an extended time sleeping uh, at a dig where you're going to be very physically active. It's sort of nice to have the opportunity to be able to spread out and just relax in the evening or whenever you get to be able to. Feel free to pick one. These are for students who didn't who don't own their own tents or mattresses, or couldn't bring them. The chief archaeologist gave a nod and excused himself. He probably had other matters to attend to before the students arrived. I studied the tents next to the building and thought about my phone, which was still on aeroplane mode. How's the Wi-Fi here? Ah, oh, very important. Yes, of course, Wi-Fi. And in fact, we did actually have Wi-Fi at Silchester Dig as well, although it wasn't brilliant and certainly didn't tend to extend towards... Uh, where the camping area was, at least not very well. But another uh, advantage of having a very big tent which you could actually set up a table in is I had a place that I could set up my laptop to be able to use it. If you stay in that tent, you might get Wi-Fi. It doesn't extend much here in the back. If you've bought a laptop, you can leave it in the laboratory. It's been done before. Everything gets locked up at night for safe keeping. Fair enough. At least I can keep in touch with my parents. Once you've finished, come back it to the front and we'll give you a tour. Will you get to see the cave today? Already already very eager. It's already locked, so you'll have to wait until morning. And the anticipation builds. Again, I'm not good at facial expressions either. I thanked her and started unpacking. There was already a mattress, pillow and sleeping bag, and it only took a few moments to settle in. Done. That's really not a lot of stuff for. I think Melissa's going to be there for eight weeks. That's not a lot of stuff for eight weeks. Grabbing a small storage bag, I zipped my tent and hurried over to the front of the building. Anyway, this is the main entrance. This will take you to. She opened the door, and my eyes widened when I saw display after display. So it was a museum. And remarkably, a tiny one, after one loop I was already back to the entrance. I wanted to examine the displays more, but I figured out I'd have more free time later. Well, I thought we might, we might, examine the displays now. Um, so yes, a museum. <laughs> so what have we got here? So here it looks like we have some potentially lithic? assemblages maybe a bit of bone there not quite sure what that is again these may be some bones massive skull there not idea what that is they do talk a lot about cave bears so i guess that might be trying to represent a cave bear um some weird what looks kind of like a mirror but i assume it's not and the sign was i assume that's supposed to be a cave interior maybe looking at the lines there maybe talking about the cave stratigraphy or sediment some interesting uh, cases here. Not sure what those are. Those could be beads or I don't know really. They're round objects depending on what sort of context they might be coming from. They could be coins depending on how long this cave was in use for. Some pots. Some more pots or potentially portable figures. some sort of information on a rack right in front of I mean what but you've got a massive picture here with this rack right in front of it I mean what are you thinking when you're designing this museum I mean what were you thinking how are you going to be able to see the nice picture behind it if you've got all this in front of it this looks this might be about the cave rocks and maybe stratigraphy or there's some static mites or something that I don't know and again some more pictures lying around and I mean what is with this centre 
the splay case here. So here these might be sort of harpoons, sort of maybe bone tools. But I mean this is a really, really odd shape. And just the way it looks like implies it's supposed to be on a plinth, but if you look down, there's no evidence of a bottom of the plinth down here, although it might not extend that far. But it just looks odd. I don't know what I don't like about it. What do you think down in the comments? And of course here you have some that look, those looks like some bells, if I'm honest, I'm not entirely sure what those supposed to be, it looks like some scales. Goodness knows what that's supposed to be. It is a very tiny museum, and it, it is again rather reminiscent of the one site museum we had at, at, at Silchester. But again, it, it's fairly oddly drawn, I think. Something odd about how the roof is as well. And actually, being a museum, there is a lot of natural light, which you don't necessarily... Well, you sort of do want, and I guess if it's only a temporary museum, it's not too bad. You sort of do and don't want, but I guess that, that that's a matter of uh, preference and uh, not an argument to get into here, or discussion to get onto here, I guess. Anyway, back to the game. Having worked as a museum professional, it's always interesting to see how museums are depicted in games as well as looking at how the archaeology is depicted and how they, they sort of view archaeologists. Shuri and I ascended the stairs by the entrance. This room is more of a multi-purpose room. It can be used for lectures and it's where findings are cleaned if the weather isn't suitable outside. I created a storage bag wondering how to bring up the next question. Fortunately, Sherry noticed. Before we get onto that, and that's potentially quite an odd thing as well, just looking around this room, what we've got here, we've got a very interesting, I guess this is supposed to be artwork, maybe potentially of a cave with a surrounding area, a whiteboard with, just trying to figure out what that's supposed to be about. It looks like bending, this might be sort of water and how local water course this could be that looks more like a stratigraphical diagram if I'm honest I'm not entirely sure what's supposed to be on that board I'm assuming we're not supposed to be able to uh, properly read it although the attention to detail it does actually look like people have attempted to write on it so that's quite nice the inclusion of the powerpoint is a nice touch and obviously here for the projector and other light sources and the primity sensor those are just nice little and projector just nice little touches to how this sort of game artwork and trying to make it look proper, make it look, you know, more real. Something important in there? Um, the extra insulin, I won't be using any yet. It needs to avoid extreme temperatures. Is there somewhere safe I can s store it? Oh, of course, thank you for reminding me. Feel free to use the indoor kitchen since it's restricted to staff members. Augustine has granted you access since he knows you're diabetic. Now, I think this is a very interesting character trait to give an archaeologist. Or, or not say archaeologist, but a character in the game. Um, there's nothing, obviously, obviously there's nothing wrong with it, and there's nothing wrong with having characters who are diabetic and, or, or, or displaying that in a game. But it's a very weird, interesting bit of characterisation, unless it's going to play a particularly important point in the plot and we'll have to wait to see if it does um, but I don't know it, it just felt a, a, a bit of a weird choice nothing, again obviously nothing wrong with that it's interesting it's nice to have a, a broader depth to someone's character um, but it just seemed a bit in fact actually someone when I, when I was digging at Silchester did have actually several people were diabetic she led me to the back giving me a chance to store the insulin bottles in the fridge and to conclude our tour, this is a lab. This is where most of the research takes place. <clears throat> How many students will be here? It varies. There can be as many as 40 or as few as 20 students from Yege are required to devote at least four weeks working at an archaeological site, regardless of their major. Therefore, we may get a lot of music and art students too. The other students should be arriving soon. How's the jet lag? Not so bad. A little fatigued, but nothing else. I'm going to be up all night, aren't I? 
Worst case scenario, I'll give you an extra day to prepare, to prepare yourself for the dig. Now, quickly before we go too much further, I have one major issue with this lab. It's far too tidy. I know no archaeological labs or conservation labs or any form of labs like that which are that neat and tidy. It's not realistic. I guess no work has started yet, although there does appear to be a, a laptop already with some spreadsheets or databases open, there's some piles of paper uh, out, another laptop with a blank screen out. I guess maybe some proprietary work by the excavation staff before the site starts, but again, it's far too tidy. What else do we have? Desk lamp, that's quite interesting, a couple of microscopes, no idea what that is supposed to be. Any guesses down in the comments? I have no idea. And again, some information panels or those windows. I can't quite tell whether it's supposed to be windows or whether, I think they're supposed to be windows, whether it's supposed to be picture frames of information in. Don't really know. No of these power points in here though, so that laptop and no lead for charge ever. How long is that battery going to last? So sorry, we, we accidentally clicked back. So worst case scenario, I'll give you an extra day to prepare yourself for the dig. You have reviewed the material I've given you, right? Um, yes, I've looked at it. Is there anything else you'd like to go over? It's been a month since my last lecture. Okay, so let's... This is now where we can inquire and we can find out a bit more contextual information about the dig and about what's going on. So let's do that. Let's inquire about Kalen Cave. Can you remind me about site again? I know it's famous for discovering the remains of a Neanderthal dating back 125,000 years ago. Correct, the site has established two Neander... Now this is, gonna, this is something that's going to come up in a moment, but they are very... This comes up all the time. They spell the Neanderthal without the H. I hate that spelling. So, although they're going to prefer that spelling and that pronunciation throughout the game, I would play, point blank refuse to pronounce it like that, so I'm always going to say Neanderthal just to let you know, just in case you uh, get confused. So, correct, the site has established two Neanderthal occupations from different times. This is the Middle Paleolithic site, with sediments ranging from 300,000 years ago to as recent as 4,000 years ago. Nice! I can't wait to discover a tooth or something. If you do, it will be likely be likely to be a cave bear. Cave bear are those remains found often. Cave bear are the remains. Cave bear are those remains found most often. Yes, ninety nine percent of all fauna, animal remains collected are cave bear. Even so, I'm sure that's something not many people can say they've dug up cave bear. So, how long have you been digging here? How long have you been part of the team? Me? Hmm. I started working for Gustin about 10 years ago. We go way back. That's how I established the Kalen Cave internship. Our university has developed a reputation for bringing over exceptional students. No pressure or anything, and. Whew. And it's just me this year. I hope I'm able to live up to expectations. I'm sure you'll do fine. So let's go over the itinerary. What's the schedule exactly? How long does the dig go till? It's ongoing until the end of August and you'll be leaving at the end of next month, was it? Right, on Saturday. I know only four weeks are required for a field school, but I thought I'll learn more if I stayed for eight. Dates aside, breakfast is served in the morning at 7.30. Cave and lab activities go from eight to noon and then there's half an hour for lunch. Activities resume one till five. As far as I can recall, that sounds pretty accurate from my experience too. Dinner starts at seven, that also sounds very accurate. On the weekends, both students and excavation team leave for home. The cave and museum are locked up during this time. Now that is a luxury. When I was digging, we had one day off, only one day off a week, and that was actually a Friday because uh, where we were digging was quite a hotspot for walkers, tourists, um, because of uh, it was a well-known site. We often had visitors 
or, or people sort of near the site on Saturdays and Sundays, um, which made it very popular for people to come and have a look at what we were doing. And of course, it was encouraged, and there's no issues with that as long as they sort of stayed within certain areas. Anyway, the back of the building will be accessible to you, of course. And if you prefer, you can sleep on the second floor if you don't like the idea of sleeping outside alone. Again, I'm sorry it's just you. I usually get more students than this. I wonder why she didn't. Hmm. I'll be okay on my own. Promise. Okay. Let's go over this field school grading system. Oh, goodness. I'd like to go over the grading system one more time. Did you bring a journal? I sure did. I'd keep a journal too. I've still got it around here somewhere, actually. Oh, dear goodness. Oh, we don't want to save yet. Essentially, I'll be grading you on your performances, both in the cave and working at the lab. I'd like you to record your findings and experiences in the journal. I expect it to be turned in every Friday evening, and I'll give it back the following Monday. If you're sick, you're allowed to miss some days. I won't deduct marks for that. However, there's no excuse for playing truant. Don't forget to take breaks often while you excavate in the cave. There's a risk of getting hypoxia due to less oxygen. I'm not just going to be marking your academics. I'll also be seeing how often you volunteer. Again, that was another big part of uh, my uh, time, actually. It was graded among field work, uh, working with the fines team and cleaning and identifying and analysing fines, working with the environmental team, with flotation tanks, um, working with bulk samples, and also a time volunteering. That could be a mixture of uh, working with food, cleaning out the toilets, which was a job that no one, no one liked, especially since often the toilets used to resemble the food And also, so did what you were digging out of the excavation site. And also working with school groups, tour groups, running activities for special open days as well. And some of these will be covered actually in, in the game as well. So it does actually give quite a good idea of what a field school is actually like. And again, in my blog, I will in the blog of this, when I've completed the game, I will be looking at sort of Again, those points of Archeo game and looking at the development of the game, how they found out and researched ideas about the game, uh, as best I can anyway, and sort of analysing how it represents archaeology, how faithfully it represents archaeology, um, and how good a game in general it is, and uh, some, some, some other ideas that I'm not going to spoil just yet. So, volunteer. Yes, students use the outdoor kitchen are in charge of preparing the meals along with the cleanup that follows. I don't expect you to volunteer all the time since that does cut into your excavation and lab time, but once in a while is ideal. Okay, so let's ask about Augustine. Is Augustine easy to get along with? He seems friendly. He is for the most part, but He's like an overprotective father when it comes to the cave. He's been supervising it for over two decades and is the leading expert. It's his baby. I'll be helping you often, of course, and as far as I'm concerned, you are my student, not his. Any problem that come up, I'll discuss them with you personally. I meekly nodded. And now I was worried about making a mistake. After all, this was all new to me. So here we go, Neanderthal or Neanderthal. <coughs> I noticed that in your lectures you use Neanderthal. I've always heard to it as Neanderthal. Is that a preference? A preference? And there's no H sound when it's pronounced in French and German. It's something that I picked up when I started working in Europe. However, both are acceptable spellings in academic journals. Here it will be referred to as <coughs> Neander Tal, although it won't, it'll be referred to as Neander Fall. Right, Neander Fall, it is. That's all, folks. I think I'm good for now. Ah. 
great. However, if any new questions come up, feel free to ask. We heard activity outside, complete with loud voices and footsteps on the gravel. It sounds like the students from Liege are here and Augustine will start the lecture soon. Huh? No chance to unpack or get ready or anything like that? No, all of the students were given instructions on when to arrive. Punctuality is valued greatly here. He'll lecture now and the students will settle in after. I'll be on my way. Some students stood while others sat on the stone tiles in front of the building. A few leaned against their luggage, but they all formed a semicircle around Augustine. There are only about 30 faces, and I wonder how the camping grounds would contain them all. They all fell silent when Ang Augustine began to speak. Although I picked up the key words such as archaeology, gote, and sediment, some of it was lost on me, and he repeated calcare a lot too. I apologise for my pronunciation. I have not studied French in about 15, 16 years, uh, so I am a little rusty. However, his gestures were vibrant and I sensed passion behind his voice. It got me looking forward to excavating tomorrow. Archaeologists do tend to gesticulate or I gesticulate a lot. But I'm trying not to in the video to avoid confusion and distraction, so I won't do a lot of this, hopefully. I'm trying to keep a hand on the mouse, you see, to stop me from doing that. So... This is another part of sort of customization that we can do. We can decide our activities. Um, in our journal, so weekly schedules. So obviously not all the activities are here yet because we've not gone into them on absolutely everything yet. And here we've got our stats, culture, rationale, empathy, diligence, stress, and our journal keeping. Some of these will for example, here, study will increase, dil will, uh, increase diligence positively, but increase stress negatively. The higher the stress, the worse it is. And that does affect some gameplay issues that we'll see later on. Uh, but then we've got things that can bring down that. Browse the internet, and oddly that doesn't uh, affect diligence. We've got inquire, which again helps increase our rationale, but decrease our stress. Now, as far as I can tell, I don't know exactly what the only stat which really appears to have a major impact noticeably is stress. Empathy, I don't know, may affect some choices in conversation. You may get different ones depending on your empathy. I don't particularly know or how people might react to what you do might be different. Um, it's never really explained. There's very little actual explanation about the game and about its mechanics and how they work or about what impact they'll have got gaming again which will help somehow increase empathy and uh, increase stress I'm not entirely sure quite how that works play catch helps increase culture and increase stress I guess stress maybe because it's taking you time away from studying and doing things like that and then socializing which helps increase culture and empathy which I get I guess because you're getting to know people from a different land that's why it increases culture and also helps increase stress Again, that does seem like an odd choice. But let's uh, be diligent to begin with. Let's get some good studying in and maybe uh, be a bit of a social recluse to begin with in the evening and play some games. But again, study and then maybe browse the internet just to make sure our stress levels aren't getting too high. Maybe a bit more study and inquire. Followed by, yeah, let's play some catch. That can always be good fun. Maybe a bit more inquiring a little bit of gaming again just trying to increase our empathy bit of study browse some internet to bring that uh, stress down again and at the weekend now we can have some different options obviously because we're not digging and people aren't going to be here so maybe to again increase our diligence we'll study maybe email well, actually, maybe no. Let's explore the museum, actually. Let's go back to here. Let's explore the museum. And then email in the afternoon. And then again, you sort of decide your weeks like this, and then you play a week at a time. So, where are we now? 
I think we'll play this week for week one and then we'll call it after that try because I don't want their video to go on too long I want to keep them reasonably short we've been going for 39 almost 40 minutes so far and I want to ideally keep them under an hour so here we go like Chevy said there was another lecture in the morning complete with a whiteboard Augustine demonstrating how to use a trowel That doesn't really look like on the board what it says at the moment, which is uh, describing how to use a trowel. The game does actually jump around a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't make a clear distinction between days. You don't necessarily always see what happens. So up here is how you keep track of the week and what day you're on. It was all in French and Sherry was kind enough to translate some key phrases or remind me that I'd covered this with her before the trip. The students were divided with one half including me to head for the cave while the other group would stay behind for lab work. The walk to the cave was roughly 10 minutes passing through a narrow path the sloped woods path in the sloped woods. The trickier sections had cement stairs installed along with handles to, uh, to prevent slipping. Now actually I do want to bring this up here because I think this this frame of the game is quite a nice way of Emphasizing it, I love the artwork of this game. It's very, very subtle. It almost feels very watercolory, very soft. But the artwork is fantastic, and I do really, really like it. I think it's fantastic. Please let me know whether you like it or don't like it in the comments, and please let me know why. Please do give me your opinions. When we reached an ordinary looking shed, Augustine pulled out his keys. I realized this was the cave entrance, or at least the artificial part of it. Once you're inside, please spread out so I can explain how to wet screen. He repeated the instructions in French as we filled through one by one. There was a raised counter in the middle with a plastic containers suspended on the wooden supports. So this is where the wet screening takes place. Looks like... Oh, oh dear goodness. Pressing the wrong buttons. So this is where wet screening takes place. Looks like it can only fit two people in at a time. I wonder how often it will be used. A lot, I can tell you that. Augustine demonstrated by lowering an empty metal sieve into a plastic container. Grabbing a hose, he mimed washing and screening and rooting through the pretend dirt. So this is quite a, a primitive wet screening process. You also get things like flotation tanks with many sieves where water's poured through and the sediments washed through different levels of sieve. Um, like we had at Silchester. This is quite a good sort of primitive method as well. As much as I tried to pay attention, the language barrier tested my focus and my eyes started to wander. Let's stay focused, shall we? Let's try and stay focused. Let's be diligent. I did come here to learn, didn't I? French or not, I should show I'm serious about this. Determined face. He's mentioning photographs a lot. Is someone coming to take pictures? Everyone started to line up after Augustine gestured to each item, which ranged from stacks of buckets to plastic containers full of trowels and brushes. I followed and carried everything in my own bucket, including a sheet of paper encased in a plastic bag. The real entrance to the cave opened leading to a narrow industrial catwalk suspended over the abyss so here we are in the cave they've actually excavated in the cave i'd love the opportunity to at some point now once i walked through the walked through the temperature dropped to a cool chill and i zipped up my hoodie i'm not wearing a hoodie i've got a couple of archaeological hoodies i should really wear them for the videos i think i have done in some of them actually Augustine directed the students to various locations while Sherry carefully slipped by and I followed. The cave opened up farther into the numerous stalactites and stalagmites everywhere. The catwalk rail disappeared where the ladders connected or where it branched off to other segments of the cave. Sherry, where will I dig? Sherry leaned over a rail and pointed to one of the deeper parts. You'll be digging here. It's a 125,000 year old layer. 
the very same one where they discovered the Neanderthal mandible. What? I'll be digging in such an important place already? Despite my nerves, I felt giddy inside. Sherry climbed down the ladder and I trailed behind her. At the bottom of the ladder was another catwalk positioned in exactly in the middle. Now that my eyes adjusted to the dim light, I noticed there were strings and cords hung everywhere in a specific pattern with notes nailed into the soil. Sherry brought me to the end of the catwalk where there was just another ladder, but this time much shorter. You'll be digging on the right side here. Here was a rather cosy looking pit, perfectly dug out square. Two to three people could probably move around freely in space. It was almost right under the main catwalk, higher up too. This is your Carrere D32. Carrere D32? Carrere means square. Everything is separated into a grid system, starting from the entrance of the cave the uppermost left to right, it all goes A1, B1, and so forth. That makes sense. It explains all the lines dangling from the ceiling, too. They're for measuring. Correct. Shall we take a closer look? The photographs for this row should be already done. I'll be right back. You can go ahead and set up and set your items down. She retreated while I placed the bucket next to the shorter ladder. I descended, then grabbed the tools before I hopped off the last step. The layer I would be working on was mostly dirt, with the odd larger rock sticking out here and there. It would be easy to dig. So there's mainly dirt. It looks like a few more than just a rock here and there sticking out. You've got some here, you've got some here, you've got some here, you've got some here. Some more down here, maybe. Looks mainly boat rocks, actually. By the time show you returned, I already had my knee pads out and the piece of paper next to me. Here we are, the picture of your square. Sherry handed it to me. I could tell it was printed off on the highest resolution possible, fully inked and glossy. What do we use this photograph for? First things first, we distinguish each layer and outline it on the photograph. Once Augustine or myself check it over, you can go ahead and start excavating. This picture is irreplaceable reference and you'll find yourself relying on it often. Please don't use it or get it tarnished. Sadly, Augustine is short-staffed at the moment. I'll be helping the other students since most are new to this too. Is that everything you'd like to go over? Oh, sorry, is there anything you'd like to go over? Let's go over the type of excavation. I've always heard about horizontal digging, but vertical? It was Augustine's idea. Stratigraphy, the study of rock layers, is extremely important, and this excavation method ensures each layer is examined in great detail. It's also easier to compare the strata when you can view it as a whole. If you want to know about the cave in general or its stratigraphical approaches, you can ask Hendrik when he arrives. He's a resident geologist and Augustine's nephew. And if you remember back to when we looked at the beginning of the game, he's one of the people we can try and romance. The details regarding the document paper. What's this? I quickly glanced at the first word at the top. Fish thing, exactly. I know we've gone over how it's used to record finds, but I flipped it open and seen a coordinate grid with a zero on the lower left corner and in the hundred for both X and Y axes. It looks complicated. Ah, that. A little bit of math will come into play. You'll be measuring where you find remains using both X and Y from the within the altitude Z. X runs parallel to the entrance while, while, whilst Y goes from front to back. Every section is divided into 100 by 100 square centimetres. Ah yes, I forgot we'll be using the metric system. My mind is going to have, to have, it's going to have fun adjusting to it. Then change to using the metric already. The grid helps and you can record what you find under the list labelled nature. Each fiche or document has its own number already written along with the year. You fill it out, you fill out the car number, the layer name and today's date. Oh, and write down the photo's number on it so there are no mix-ups. Did you get all that? Um, that's a lot to take in, but I think I grasped it. 
It's easier once you actually start and I'll be here to help. Remember, one fish per layer. What if do what do we do once we find an artifactal bone? So what do we do once I found a Neanderthal tooth? Firstly, don't pluck it out like some amateur archaeologist. You'll lose the context. Measure it before you remove it, number it, and carefully wrap it in tinfoil. There will be a plastic bag you can use to store all of the findings. How do you number the findings? Just by the order you find it. One, two, three, jot it down on a piece of paper and stick it in the tin foil as well so it won't get lost. When you finish excavating the entire layer, seal everything found into a plastic bag along with the completed fish. Believe me, you'll feel relieved to finally finish a layer. Got handling each layer. When I excavate vertically, I just focus on one layer at a time, right? That's the ideal approach, however the layers aren't perfect straight lines like the textbook diagrams. They ride in a narrow slant or disappear completely. If you come to a situation where you have to dig through more than one layer, keep separate fiches and buckets, never mix the contents. Because once you fill up a bucket, you'll be wet screening the material. Anything you overlooked the first time, such as bone, will then be deposited in a cup marked with, with that layer name. What happens if you find something extremely important, like an entire Neanderthal skull? I admit, the image of finding suddenly pulling a complete skull out of the screening area was rather comical. And seriously, if you do end up doing that, you're probably maybe going to want to reconsider a career choice. Then better hope Augustine doesn't see it. You never want to find flint or burnt bone in your tamassage, which is French for screening. Keep a careful eye out, and if you find something you're unsure of, ask me or a fellow archaeologist. I think I got it. I'm good, Sherry. Wonderful. I'll give you some time to get familiar with your square. Ooh. If you're struggling, remember you can always adjust the heat lamps. Also, the photograph's contrast has been altered to help distinguish your sedimentary layers easily. I'll be back shortly. That's actually one thing I, I really wished that we could actually see was the photograph. They don't really show representation of that. I glanced down at the photograph before comparing the vertical wall in front of me. No matter how close I looked, everything was brown, brown, brown and more brown. Again, I know I remember that feeling quite well. How am I supposed to tell the difference of this brown layer from that brown layer? Not deterred, I picked up a pencil and began marking the more distinct sediments. Eventually, it became less solid brown and I could see the reds and the faint yellows within the soil. I was so focused I barely registered that I was not alone anymore. And I think on that slight cliffhanger, as it's coming up to now on the video, we are going to leave it there. I'm going to save it over this save file here actually. So we're going to leave it there for today. I hope uh, you enjoyed the game. Um, So as mentioned, I'm looking at this game, both in the way of Arcure Gaming, but also those of you who might have followed some of my Christmas blogs. I like exploring games which sort of look at archaeology and how they represent archaeology, which is sort of part of Arcure Gaming, but only a small part. There's a much wider part of Arcure Gaming than what it looks at. Again, if you want to find out more, go and look at my blog at www.coffeebreakarchaeology.blog. I will put a link down in the description of the video. So again, that's I'm going to look at that partly in the video, but again, that will be mainly looked at and devoted to a blog, blog article, which as I mentioned during the video, I will also look at the development of the game, their sort of research, how they found out about archaeology, and uh, other other things like that. I'm not going to say too much about that now because I want to keep that separate for, for the blog. So whilst I was actually doing it, I did have some ideas. I think I am going to try and finish this game in its entirety before I move on to the next one. So lines don't blur and I don't have to recap too much in each episode. So the next episode, I think, will probably be released 
mid next week I'll try to do it and I'll try and keep to about an hour long episode as mentioned the game is sort of between three to four hours gameplay so that's probably going to be three to four episodes of the game then I'll write the blog articles looking at it um, again that may be ongoing whilst I look at other games because I'm still myself exploring the idea of archeo gaming trying to do more research into it look at um, other blogs which are out there I also link to a blog by Andrew Reinhard who wrote the archeo gaming book that I'm looking at he has a good book good blog on archeo gaming um so please do go and check that out at this point i will just say i have no relationship with andrew reinhard i am not affiliated with him anyway but we do really do enjoy his work um so that's why i'm putting the link down there as well so that's the only reason i'd also like to point out at this point that i am not sponsored in any way for doing this game uh, by the developers or anyone like that i'm doing it purely out of the pure fun for doing it so again, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me again in this video. If you did like, if you did uh, enjoy the video, please like the video. It really does help. And if you want to see more, then do hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you'll find out when I upload next. Until next, ev until next time, everyone. Please do take care, and remember, don't eat each other. Take care, and all the best.